Let's get to five headlines. So the RNC convention last night, night three, I hosted our all access watch party. I think we had a good time. Um, And I was really happy that our all access members had an opportunity, uh, you know, had the special treat of listening to me all night. So that was wonderful for them. And there, there were even a few good speakers during the convention as well, I thought. Um, now, I'm, I'm biased, admittedly, but I, I thought the star of the night, the best speech, was from Sister Deirdre Byrne. Uh, she's an army colonel, a doctor, and a nun. It kind of sounds like the beginning of a joke, but it's all, it's all rolled into one. So she's all of those. And she got up to speak, and she did not disappoint at all. Take a listen. While we tend to think of the marginalized as living beyond our borders, the truth is the largest marginalized group in the world can be found here in the United States. They are the unborn. As Christians, we first met Jesus as a stirring embryo in the womb of an unwed mother and saw him born nine months later in the poverty of the cave. It's no coincidence that Jesus stood up for what was just and was un- ultimately crucified because what he said wasn't politically correct or fashionable. As followers of Christ, we are called to stand up for life against the politically correct or fashionable of today. We must fight against a legislative agenda that supports and even celebrates destroying life in the womb. Keep in mind the laws we create define how we see our humanity. And we must ask ourselves, what are we saying when we go into a womb and snuff out an innocent, powerless, voiceless life? As a physician, I can say without hesitation, life begins at conception. That's, that's awesome. And you, you, know, I mean, you know I'm going to like that. That's, that is right in my wheelhouse. And I have to tell you, just so you know, if you're not Catholic, what you just saw there that's a, a real nun, okay? She's got the habit. She's defending the unborn. She's very kind and gentle, but you get the impression that she could whoop your ass if she needed to. So those are, those are nun vibes, okay? It's total nun vibes. Contrast that with the fake nun at the DNC, dressed like a secretary, praying to the sky goddess or whatever she was doing. Um, so, you know, just all you need is that contrast. And I know which nun I'm going to choose in the celebrity death match. Uh, other than that, I thought there were other good moments, some good speeches. Um, I also thought there were missed opportunities, and I think there have been some missed opportunities all throughout this R- the RNC convention. Now, they, they, yeah, they've talked about supporting the police. They've talked about the riots and chaos. They've talked about law and order. I think there should be an even greater emphasis on that. I mean, we are right now, the RNC convention is happening. They've got three hours of primetime coverage while... Um, Democrats are burning down the city in Kenosha. And, you know, and, and so I think that I think there's a real opportunity there to focus in intensely and show people what's happening, and you know, in with 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 specificity, not just saying, "Oh, right. at this point, when you say rioting, it almost doesn't mean anything to people. We're numb to it." I think you need to get into, into specifics and talk about specific things that are happening, and then call out Democrats by name who refuse to condemn it or who, uh, or who have actually actively encouraged it. There's been a little bit of that, some of that. I think there should be more. Okay, number two, CNN has been a parody of itself, of course, for years now. But what I'm about to show you is so embarrassing and disgraceful that the phrase beyond parody scarcely begins to cover it. Watch. What you're seeing behind me is one of multiple locations that have been burning in Kenosha, Wisconsin, over the course of the night, a second night since Jacob Blake was seen shot in the back seven times by a police officer. And what you are seeing now, these images came and come in stark contrast to what we saw over the course of the daytime hours in Kenosha and into the early evening, which were largely peaceful demonstrations in the face of law enforcement. It wasn't until night fell that things began to get a little bit more contentious. Things were thrown back and forth. Police started using some of those crowd dispersal tactics like tear gas, even playing uh, very loud sounds to push them out. And then what you are seeing, the common theme that ties all of this together is an expression of anger and frustration over what people feel like has become an all too familiar story playing out in places from across the country, not just here in Kenosha, Wisconsin. 
fiery, but mostly peaceful protests, CNN says, as a literal fire rages in the background. Um, I, I, I'm, you know, it makes you wonder, like, if they were reporting live from the Titanic. A pleasant cruise, but a little damp, probably what they would say. You know, people sometimes ask questions like, is there really anything new about biased media? Uh, you know, did having a media more interested in propaganda than truth, is that new? I mean, has it? And the answer is no, of course it's not. As long as there has been anything like a news media, it's been biased and, and there's been propaganda. I think the difference now, um, between now and other periods in the past, is that these days the media really just has no concern for the truth at all, period. They aren't even worried about looking like they're telling the truth. And this largely is a reflection of our post-truth culture where relativism reigns supreme. And uh, many of the people in this country honestly believe that truth is fluid and can be whatever they want it to be. And the media reflects that. Um, And I think the media, in fact, reflects it more than it drives it. The media is a symptom of the underlying moral relativism, uh, not not more than it is a, a, a cause of that. Let's go to number three. As you probably heard by now, the 17-year-old who killed two rioters, Kyle Rittenhouse is his name, has been arrested and charged with first-degree murder. Um, And now we we haven't seen, here's what it comes down to for me. First-degree murder is the charge. We haven't seen, as far as I'm aware, any video that shows anything other than self-defense. There are multiple videos out there of, of Rittenhouse and of the two incidents that occurred. Um, now, if, if there's something floating around out there, evidence of an actual first-degree murder, I haven't seen it, and I've looked. There's still a question mark here, a pretty big one. The second shooting, the one that was caught vividly and close up on camera, that, to my mind, clearly self-defense, non-controversial. He's falling, they're chasing. One of the riders also has a gun. Um, he falls, they try to pounce on him. He gets, sh- you know, then he opens fire. Self-defense all the way. Uh, I, I think I think that part of it, any defense attorney is going to have no problem handling that. You could hire me as your as your defense attorney. My 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 legal education involves watching Better Call Saul. That's all I got, and even I could probably get you clear on those charges. But then you have the first shooting, um, and that's the one that wasn't clearly caught on tape, as far as I know. I think from what we have seen, there are strong indications of, of self-defense, but you know, I, I, I don't think we fully know yet. Here's what we do know, though, sadly. Kyle Rittenhouse is screwed, no matter what. Even if he's innocent, which he very may well, he, 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 may, he, he, uh, he very well may be, but even then, he's still, he's still screwed because our media and system is rigged against people like him, and they're going to they're gonna make an example of him. You know, it's all the people talking about problems in the system, they're right. There are serious problems in the system. It's just not the problem they're talking about. Number four, the New York Post reports that a taxidermist in England has now unveiled uh, his latest work. It's called Potable High Five Machines. And they're made using limbs uh, from rodents, uh, apparently. And uh, reading now from the article, it says, his inspiration came from wanting to help people who like to celebrate and greet each other with a high five, but are concerned about doing so during coronavirus. He said, um, they're called potable high five machines and are are made out of rat legs. He said, I've been skinning rats to make other things, but I accidentally tore off one of the legs when I was making an, I was making an abominable snowman, which have heads made from rat scrotums. I don't want to waste it or just throw it into my tub of odd, odd toes and scraps of ball sack. So I thought of so I thought it might be nice to make a, a portable high five machine. Okay, well that makes sense. Personally, I don't know why you wouldn't take your tub of toes and ball sack and make like a nice stew or even a dip uh, for your tostitos and to serve when your fellow serial killers come over for the the game on Sunday. Um, now let's take a look at this creation here. There it is. There's the the high five machine. Absolutely horrifying. Imagine waking up tied to a chair in somebody's root cellar and you look around and you see that, you see that right there. What would you think? And then you look to the other side of the room and you see little snowmen made from rat scrotum. 
And then you say to the other person tied up in the room with you, hey, it looks like that snowman is made from a rat scrotum. And they say to you, how can you so easily identify a rat scrotum? And you say, because this is my basement. And then you take out your axe and kill him. Twist ending. You didn't see that coming. Got a little dark there at the end. All right. um, Number five. Finally, a video has gone viral. I'm not sure who this girl is or even if this is supposed to be a joke or not, but uh, people are taking it seriously and uh, and um, are, are mocking this girl. My perspective on it might surprise you a little bit. I don't know. But first, watch this. I was just doing my makeup for work and I just wanted to tell you guys about how I don't think math is real. And I know that like it's real because we all like learn it in school or whatever, but who came up with this concept? And you're like, Pythagoras, but how? How did he come up with this? He was living in like the, I don't know, whenever he was living, but it was not now where you can like have technology and stuff, you know? Like he didn't even have plumbing. And he was like, let me worry about y equals mx plus b. Which first of all, how would you even figure that out? How would you like start on the concept of algebra? Like, what did you need it for? You know, cause like I get like addition, like, hey, if I take two apples and then add three, it's five, you know? But how would you come up with the concept of like algebra? Cause what would you need it for? You know what I mean? Like, what would you need it for back then? You didn't need it. So why would you come up with it? Now, of course, people are sharing that and mocking her for being an idiot. Uh, that seems to be the consensus. But I'm going to I'm going to unironically, and I have to say that because no one can ever tell when I'm being ironic or not. So unironically, I will defend her here because what she's posing is actually a very intelligent question and one that philosophers and mathematicians have been debating for thousands of years. In fact, the people that are calling her stupid have only revealed their own stupidity. You know, oftentimes you can tell how dumb someone is by how they react to an abstract point or question like this. Oh, that's a stupid question. No, it's just you're stupid. So you don't understand why that's actually a really intelligent question. Um, Is math real? That is not a stupid... Einstein wondered about the same thing. Was he stupid? There is a debate about whether math is innate to the universe, a a sort of a fundamental facet of reality, or, or whether it's a human construct. In other words, is math invented by people or did we discover it? Entire philosophical theories have been built around the idea that math is not innate, um, that it was invented, which is what the girl here is suggesting. And I don't happen to agree. I think math is is innate and, and mathematics is just the process of noticing and sort of attaching symbols to these innate patterns in the universe. So math is real but symbolic. Uh, you know, we use a little sideways M to denote the fact that there are three units of something, um, we could use any symbol for that. So that's symbolic, but it is still a fact. And uh, that there are three, or whatever word and symbol you want to use to denote it. But what the girl is demonstrating here is a capacity for abstract thought. Um, Just the practice of taking something basic and questioning why it exists, or if it exists, or why it needs to exist, that's a capacity that I think we should encourage in young people. And I think one of the problems with the public education system is that it's not encouraged. You know, if you're in math class and you're learning algebra and you raise your hand and say, you know, and start asking philosophical questions about whether this is, you know, a a fundamental pattern of the universe or whether this was invented or what's, what's, you know, there's not going to be time to get into that with you. And you're just going to be told to shut up and do your, do your assignment. Um, but these are exactly the questions that I think young people should be encouraged to, to think about and talk about. I, I think most people never wonder about these things because they're not intellectually curious and their brains can't deal very well in the abstract. But when you see this, uh, I think when we see this in kids, we should encourage it and not go, you moron, what an idiot, and make farting noises in their faces. I, I don't think that's the right response when young people are asking abstract questions. That's just me, though. That's my thought. Thank you for tuning into The Daily Wire, one of the fastest growing conservative media outlets in the entire country. If you enjoyed this video, uh, be sure to give it a like and a subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss out on any of our content.